The Ninja Star is a product I love yes. because the tiny little ProRes recorder just sits on top of your camera and effectively, it depends which camera you've got, it will either trigger over HDMI or you'll do it manually if you've got an older camera. Yeah. I've been using it on the PMW F3. That little Ninja Star becomes my record button. Absolutely. But, but what I wanted to say, talk about mm. media, is for me to buy a single 64 gig S by S card is more than a Ninja Star with a 64 gig C fast, fast card. card from us in it. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It's crazy. So why would you use you, you put an S base card in for a backup in case something goes wrong, which it rarely does with our products. But if it does, you've got the backup, and then you just keep writing over the top of that. You never have to use the S by S. Don't forget, S by S is 35 megabit second 420. I'm getting 10 bit 422 coming yes. out of your little recorder at less than the cost of one car. Speaking to Jeremy Young from Atomos. Jeremy, you guys have been going great guns. You've got the Ninja Star, which I think is a fantastic product. Yep. You've got your whole range of ProRes recorders, yep. the Ninja Blade, yep. the Samurai Blade, and you've got this amazing 4K recorder. Yes. So, the Shogun, yes. tell us all about it. So yeah, we've been uh, working really hard to make sure that we're putting all the features in that, that people have requested. Um, so not only do we have the best screen in the industry, but we're taking these 4K sensors, which often these cameras don't record 4K internally, and we're giving them 4K capability, not just 4K, it's 422 10-bit 4K ProRes. We're also offering Cinema DNG for raw recording from like FS700, from uh, C500, and you'll see those roll out after the initial release in a couple of months as we get stronger at recording those raw formats. So it's a raw recorder and a ProRes recorder. And a ProRes recorder does HD up to 120 frames a second, and it does... Um, 4K up to 30p. Now we have tested, we can run this thing at 60p, 4K, um, and we will be able to do 240 frames a second. But as we as we develop further, then we'll be giving those updates in Atomos style for free as we uh, go forward. So the customers can expect change, yes. but good change as we add features to the product. Okay, it's a massive deal. 4K is something that every manufacturer seems to be either building or moving in that direction yes. and yet we're still living in a 1920 1080 world so you're covering your bases and you're future proofing yourself yes yeah, yeah, with this, with this product but I think we're also accelerating the pickup of 4k so think about it you've got the a7s for two and a half grand or the GH4 for sixteen hundred dollars this is US dollars I'm talking and then you've got our product for two thousand US dollars by themselves but the cameras and our recorder not that great. Put them together and you've got equivalent of seriously almost up to F5 kind of level. It's amazing. It is amazing. It is a big deal. And that will, not only that, it's the media cost of moving from one format to another. Like HD to, uh, sorry, SD to HD was all about media cost. Flash memory, P2 cards, they were 1500 bucks for 8 gig, 20 minutes of recording. That killed the pickup of HD. It was only when it was affordable that we that the mass market moved and that took eight years we think 4k is going to be four years we're already two years into it the pickup has already started and we're going to lead the charge with the sony's panasonics at the moment and i'm sure canon will come on board and, and nikon will come on board in the next year or so um, we don't have any information on that but I'm, it's obvious i think that they will and then you put those combos together and what you have is the world's best most affordable recording media. So we go to SSDs, we go to rated spinning discs. So for $120, you can do five hours of ProRes recording on two terabytes. That is ridiculously cheap. It's actually the same cost as HD, which is removing that barrier to moving to 4K. This is the best color representation monitor. It's an IPS 19 20 1200 monitor. So we're at 330 PPI. And that 330 PPI means that you have basically laser print paper quality. Now, everyone's been looking at their iPhone and iPad for many, many years, and then wondering why my camera doesn't have the same type of resolution on the screen. Well, we, we, we had the same feeling. So we're just trying to do and add value to the, these wonderful Japanese cameras that are out there. 4K is only here now. It really is. There's, there's only really two cameras that are really doing 4K well, GH4 and the A7S, really. Unless you're going really high-end cameras like Reds and and, and or F5s, F55s. F5s, F55s. Now they're great, but that's a different market segment to the masses. Or FS700 does 4K FS700 as well. FS700 does 4K, but only raw. 
Okay. But the new that? FS7. Now that's exciting. Eight thousand dollars. F5 sensor. Records X XAVC internally, so it's. 30 megabit or something like yes. that, 4K, yeah. which is good, great for broadcasters, but not great for post-production. So we record from that camera 4K ProRes. Now they've announced that they have a ProRes module HD up to 30p for two grand. This is Sony, right? Sony. Okay. Or you could buy a Ninja Star for 300 bucks and get exactly the same thing to see fast cards. But it also pumps out 4K over HDMI or SDI. And guess what records that? So we're actually very close to Sony. Those camera divisions, we, we're, we're in communication all the time. We knew this camera was coming. It's triggering together. That $2,000 with $8,000 F5 based sensor equals the best camera under 10 grand that has ever been produced yeah. in terms of recording quality and sensor and image quality. So I urge customers to really check the sensor, check the signal processing, which the major Japanese makers have a lot of lead on and, and a lot of technology in. So we're about the sensor of the camera. We then take that recording out into one of two, two things, HDMI or on the back of the unit we've got SDI. Yeah. What we've done is added XLR audio right here on the side of the unit. Okay. So that gives you, and this is this is um, into the chassis, on in four into six locations. So this is very very strong and powerful as a as a as a device. Yeah. Um, so you've got balanced um, phantom and mic, balanced XLR audio, which and you adjust that on the screen. You've got two channels in, two channels out. Great. Okay. So two in, two out. You got the grey ones are out, right. and the black ones are in. And so we think that that's a pretty compelling solution for um, customers. Oh, and I'll just show you while we're here. I'll show you the, uh, you got Genlock, yep. SDI in and out.